Rick Perry's time in office, the DPS headquarters was in Midland, not here. Politics should keep out of these issues. We need solutions, we need leadership, and we need folks that will come to the table to make the solutions happen in short, mid, and long-term time frames. You had a question? Yeah, Bob Cook um, from Redco yesterday said these numbers are alarming, that he's not seeing this uh, in his, with the company he works, he works with. He says that um, they're still, you know, looking at uh, Mexico to relocate and uh, if they've had any effects on job losses, it's because, of, it's because of the recession and not because of the cartels. With all due respect to Mr. Cook, Mr. Cook does not know what he's talking about. You've had 100,000 jobs left in Juarez. Many of those came from contraction due to the recession. When the United States automobile industry loses sales because people feel uh, insecure about the ability to finance an automobile, it affects Juarez. But without question, the security issue is now affecting those companies. The real issue is how do we work together across the region to cement job manufacturing futures to work in clusters that are coming to our region like energy, particularly solar, and to make sure we're growing manufacturing jobs, not losing them. His failure to deal directly with these issues is one of the problems. And we need to come together as a community to diagnose what is happening, deal with real facts, and then come forward with a regional solution. If you will talk to the logistic manager at Lear over in Juarez, you'll get a very different story. At Lear, gang came in, stole the ATM machine right off the floor, put a gun to the head of the employees who were on the ground, and stole the payroll. Now, if Mr. Cook's being honest with you, he'll talk a little bit about that. At Foxconn, there was a riot two weeks ago. So these issues have come into uh, discussions, and the question is how do we preserve the manufacturing capacity of border regions, because it's important in North America. When you're talking about one-fifth of North American manufacturing capacity in El Paso Juarez, that is a significant issue that presidents in both countries are looking at. And, and finally, Senator, what do you think has been the catalyst? I mean, obviously we've been hearing about this violence for years now. What do you think is the reason why we're getting all this attention now? What is happening is that policymakers are seeing deep implications. When whole regions of countries become narco states, that is a threat to American security. When manufacturing is no longer able to meet cost and production numbers and migrates to Vietnam, that affects national numbers. So folks are looking at what is happening and what is as the epicenter of issues that need to be dealt with now. Let's just talk about the manufacturing side. If Mexico were to lose the tax revenues from the manufacturing side, it would be significant to the national budget. That is what is getting attention in Juarez. When each of these border communities, to a degree, is experiencing the same issues, Reynosa, for example, if you went and track the murder rate in Reynosa, it's rising because pressures in Juarez are moving gangs to there for that trade route. So it is not an El Paso Juarez issue. It is the 2,000 miles of the U.S.-Mexico border that need to be dealt with in the aggregate. The border has 100 million people in it now. If you go up 250 miles either side of the border, you have 100 million people. If the border were a nation, it would be third in output. So these issues are very important internationally to deal with and that's why Juarez has become the center of reforming policy. <clears throat> what Napolitano, Clinton, and Gates will do in Mexico is to articulate and confirm these four pillars in anticipation of the President's meeting in May. This started months ago. There were 250 experts on the ground here. Um, three or four weeks ago, taking apart every single one of these agency approaches and asking hard questions about how's a family going to feel safe in the streets in Mexico? How's that going to affect manufacturing capacity? What if you have nine-hour waits for trucks? 
What if you have 48,000 people arrested over Juarez in our, of these border states and only 2% are being prosecuted? Those were the questions that were being asked. And so when you take apart from the fact finding and understand what's going on, you can then inform good policy at the highest level that will come back here to El Paso Juarez, and that's the important part. This is the first time in my experience that you've had this level of attention and real policy changes that will make a difference. Was most of this discussed in D.C. when you had your visit? Well, I've been having discussions with these various agencies now for eight years. I've been at DHS in Washington, D.C. five times about these border crossings and border waves. But what's happened over the last uh, two months, and in, in a lot of detail, is high-level policy people coming here to take apart these agencies, to understand the workings on the ground, and to come up with the plan, the framework, to change it. So what will happen at the highest level is you'll, say, you'll hear something called Medida II, which will have four new pillars, four new foundation elements built around the four that we just articulated that will have significance here in El Paso because it will change how DHS works, it will change how um, they work over at Customs, CBP, it'll change how we integrate with uh, Mexican law enforcement, and ultimately it'll change how Texas works because these agencies on the ground are the majority of law enforcement. It's not DEA and FBI to keep us safe, it is the El Paso Police Department, the Sheriff, and the Department of Public Safety. So making these agencies work together, share information, and get after these forfeitures is really one of the keys to making this work. Did the murders uh, that happened this past weekend have anything to do with pushing this a little bit faster than maybe it would have moved? If I were to identify the tipping point, it was the massacre in Juarez of 15 teenagers. When the president of Mexico identified them as drug cartel operatives, when in fact they were completely innocent, it sparked outrage in Juarez. And when that mother of a slain teenager confronted the president of Mexico, and for the first time he let that go on national TV, and then went back to Mexico City and said our policies are not working, and then asked his cabinet to come back here, and they came, and then he came a third time with these uh, two consular officers that were slain, the real significant turning point was that event, because the emotions, the outrage, and the voicing of real concerns in Juarez is what changed his mind about what needed to be done. When he decided and was willing to admit policies were not working on the ground, that was the catalyst, because all the agencies on the Mexican side are now engaged. The fundamental question is safety on the streets. How do families feel safe when there is widespread corruption in the police force and the law enforcement system all the way up to the judges does not work? That is the most vexing question in these discussions. Randy, anything else? Okay. Guys, thanks for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Senator. You bet. Looks expensive. Almost.